What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on the next to the last video in our compilation of advanced side mount and wreck penetration dives. And this is a really fun video for me. This was a penetration that was very challenging and it actually took me a while to get the confidence up to make this penetration, but then it even took me a while to actually make the penetration itself. And I'm going to talk about some of the struggles that I had. But also in this video, I'm going to show you kind of the unedited version. So you'll first see the edited clip, then you'll see the unedited, and I'm going to show you the complete setup that I needed to do to make this penetration successful and of course safe as well. Now I know a lot of you guys have been asking, why? Why are you guys making these penetrations? There's really no benefit to them. Well in this video we're also going to talk about why we do it. The whole purpose of us getting out there and challenging ourselves. And yes, we are doing it in a safe environment. We have have extra support divers there with us, uh, not just a cameraman, but extra support divers as well in case we do get stuck. But primarily we do this to practice our skill sets. And in this video, you're going to see me practice not only buoyancy control, but breathing control as well. And this is what I think really takes side mount divers to the next level. And it's what really drives in proper trim, proper buoyancy, and proper breathing control as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this video and I'll show you the edited and like I said, I'll show you the unedited version with no music and you'll actually see it from a different angle and you'll see all the struggles I dealt with. So I'm gonna hit play here. This is a basketball goal up at Lake Phoenix and typically there is a net around this goal here, but uh, I'm gonna see if I can get through it. And most of you guys know I'm pretty, pretty of a chunky fella here. So we're gonna see if we can get through this basketball goal. Now I did choose a no mount situation here because I really don't think I could have made it through with tanks on my side. You'll notice one of my cylinders, which is my right cylinder, is actually all the way on the bottom. I've kind of staged it there temporarily. And I've got my left cylinder gunned out. Now as I go through here, there's a couple of things I wanted to make sure I done first. One, I wanted to make sure I could get through it, so I, I measured it with my shoulder width to make sure I could get through, and I made sure that my shoulders could go through before anything else could. Now the cool thing here, and I'm going to pause it just temporarily, the cool thing here is this is going to force you in a situation that if you do get stuck, you're really going to have to practice your back finning to get back out. Yeah, I've got divers there to help push me out or push me through. But if you can back fin going vertically, it's a really cool way to practice back finning. Go ahead and finish up. You'll see I made it through very safely, very secure. And if you hadn't already tell, basketball goals are a little bit bigger than they actually appear. It's almost an optical illusion that they're that small. But notice my trim. Notice my buoyancy as I'm going through here. I'm holding trim, I'm holding proper buoyancy, and I didn't have any cylinders on. Yes, I had weight on my body, but I didn't have any cylinders on and I'm holding that trim and buoyancy as I go to put them back on. We're gonna watch it one more time at the edited version, and then I'm gonna show you the unedited full clip here, and you'll see it from a different angle as well. So I've already measured to see if I think my shoulders can get through. I've already staged one cylinder there on the bottom, and I chose to go with my left cylinder as well. Now, one of the reasons I did that, if I need to have buoyancy control with my BCD, my left cylinder is what controls that. So I'm going to go ahead and go down, which I have unclipped it for this because I have really needed to gun it out a little bit further than normal. But there you'll notice I was dumping all the air out of my BC. I'm completely inverted. I'm going to go through shoulders first to make sure I can get my shoulders through. Once my shoulders get through, I pretty much know that I can get everything else through. And then I'm going to go ahead and descend down. Now, if you saw this little clip on our Instagram, somebody asked me on Instagram, why did I go through going in a descending motion versus going ascending? And there's a couple of reasons. First and foremost, that basketball gold is very rusted. The steel of the ring of the basketball gold there, it's very, very rusted and it's extremely sharp on the bottom side. So I didn't want to go up with that sharp edge dragging across me or my equipment. Uh, number two, I didn't want to get into a situation where even if I had a little bit of air in my BC, that as I come up, as pressure decreases, the bladder starts to expand out and I actually got stuck in it because the bladder expanded out. As I'm going down, pressure's, de or pressure's increasing. That means that bladder is being shrunk in, so that kind of helped me go through. So it was because of the jagged edge, and it was also simply because I didn't want to get stuck because of Boyle's Law. Now I'm gonna show you the unedited version real quick, and this is from a different angle. This is a little bit longer clip here, but this shows you just about everything I had to do to kind of plan for this. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And of course, you will see the basketball come in to, uh, on screen there. I'm going to go ahead and ditch one of my cylinders. Like I said, I'm going to stage my right cylinder here. So I'm going to go ahead and get, get it prepped. And the reason I, I chose to just lay it there at the bottom, any diver could have very easily swam over, got it, handed it up to me if I needed it for air. Uh, plus, it's the long hose cylinder. My, my right cylinder is the long hose. So if it's standing on the bottom, that hose could have very easily stretched up to me if I needed the extra air to kind of work through and not have to control that bottle or have that bottle clipped off. So that's why I chose to do that. Um, now, as I go up here, you can actually see this is where I'm measuring the goal itself. And all I did was just measure the goal, pull my hands in to measure my shoulder width to make sure I could go through. I know my belly will go through, even though it's big enough, I can suck in my gut. Unfortunately, I can't suck in my shoulders. So that's why I chose to measure my shoulder width. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prep my left cylinder, which is my short hose system. Get it gunned out. And now you're seeing it from the, the opposite angle of what you saw it from before. Now, once I get lined up and I get into position, you're going to see I'm going to dump all that air out of my BC. And like I said, this is one of those times when you really need to have perfect trim, perfect buoyancy, and perfect breathing techniques so that you can manipulate everything simply with your breathing. I'm properly weighted. I have a balanced rig on, which we've talked about that in plenty of videos. And I just take my time. Push on through. Now watch, as I come down, I'm gonna hold neutral buoyancy. That's all with my breathing. I'm gonna hold perfect trim. And I'm gonna slowly start to attach my cylinders back to me. Notice I'm not bouncing off the bottom. If I was too heavy here, I'd be off the bottom. If I had way too much air in my bladder, I would just be going up to the surface. So I'm just taking my time, holding trim. Holding neutral buoyancy. And there I've got my left cylinder back into place. And then I can go ahead and grab onto my right cylinder, get it situated and work through. But yeah, that's actually one of my favorite penetrations to make up at Lake Phoenix. I really enjoy this penetration. It's very challenging. It does take a lot of setup. If you've ever dove Lake Phoenix, you'll know that basketball goal there does have a net on it. That means we have to remove the net to make this penetration. And then, of course, we put the net back up after we're done. But it really allows us to work on our trim, our buoyancy, our breathing techniques. And it does kind of push our limitations as far as what we can penetrate as a side mount diver. In this case, an advanced side mount or an advanced wreck diver as well. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know this one was a little bit longer than the rest. But I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it very educational. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. We do have one video left in this series, so definitely stay tuned for that. But guys, if you liked the video, give me a big thumbs up. Up, definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.